Week four of the CCL is upon us. We've got two teams with a lot to ride on the table, especially when it talks about top three in their division. My name is McCormill, along with myself is Proper Cast. And Andy, talk to me just a bit right out of the gates about not only PNW, but Butler as well, who are both vying for the top three in their pool. Yeah, Purdue Northwest versus the Butler Bulldogs. This one is going to be uh, quite an interesting matchup, to say the least, as you say, Alex. This will define the third match, uh, or the third place, I should say, in Division C for the Midwest region. Why do we say that? It's because you still have a lot of other teams you have to be aware of. We'll have that second matchup to be able to define that. Furthermore, in between Eli and I uh, versus Redbird Cod, but even still, you also have Trine in the mix. Make it to be top three, and you are then in that elite cut going towards the tail end of the season. When you're looking at these two teams as a whole, Alex Butler, they ended up beating Trine. On the other side, though, for Purdue Northwest, they did not. So there's a lot of riding on this matchup as a whole, more or less for Purdue Northwest, given how they don't have that head-to-head. -head. Yeah, I mean, overall, this division is on the lower end. Interesting in, in, in the form of some of those lower teams might be able to make a push later on in the season. Do we expect it? Probably not. But towards the top of the division is where things get a little scary because in this division, you also have Illini as well as the number or a couple of 10 teams. Redbird Cod and Andy, this is the team that we saw last week against this Butler roster where it looked okay overall. Butler were really nice in map number one. Besides that, though, the rest of the series really wasn't all that close. No, it really wasn't. I mean, when it comes down to Butler as a whole, you know, it, being able to come out of the gate swinging is one thing. You can bark, you bark, but you got to be able to at least walk the walk at the same time. And, you know, that that's, again, why we just talk about uh, this this matchup in particular. You can define yourself as a top three teams, more specifically for Butler, again, given how they do have that head-to-head -head versus Shrine. Well, then you might be able to put a certain pep in your step towards the end of the season. Showing to a tremendous improvement are the Butler Bulldogs. Ever since week number one, you know, everybody just kind of uh, throwing whatever they possibly could find at a wall and seeing what ends up sticking. But Butler has been showcasing themselves to be able to adapt going forward. We need to be able to see that out of PNW as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, PNW, you, you look at this roster, you've basically played half of the top teams already going forward at this part of the season. So against Butler here, uh, again, you kind of highlighted beforehand how Butler was able to beat Trine. If you're PNW, you don't beat Trine, but beating Butler here would be incredible for head-to-head -head matchups when we talk about what it's going to take later on in the season, when overall you're going to have to kind of go up against one another and at, at least try to make yourself a playoff push when you're talking about record overall, but more importantly, the head-to-head -head win column against your opponents yeah uh, you essentially have to win out uh, going forward if you are Purdue Northwest uh, at this point in time like if you're if you're looking at PNW to be able to make it an extensive run you have to be able to win this knowing that you're gonna probably end up taking the Elvers the line I that's the last top team that you have to face and this will be a true test in between weeks three and four where we find ourselves now whether or not they can actually beckon to be a top three teams as you take a look at these series head-to-head I -head. Uh, I mean they're just the one series uh, that is the biggest differential in between PNW and Butler five and two four and two overall not really big start differences but what does speak volumes here is the amount of hard points that they have played in between each other and just the S and D uh, differential in between the two and it doesn't really you know give uh, the amount of value that I want to say about these two teams because you know four and four for PNW four and three for Butler but it's the ways that PNW have lost their search and destroys versus other teams within this division, Alex, that really yep. does speak further volumes versus Butler. The ones that they have lost have been considerably close, barring, you know, the 1-6 the loss that they didn't end up facing versus Illini uh, and other ones in between. But definitely a lot tighter search and destroys for Butler comparatively to B, uh, PNW. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. In For Butler specifically, I, I think the one thing we kind of have to hit on more so than anything else is that when you're playing against those top teams, you are playing up to their standards when it comes to Search and Destroy. Again, barring what we said about the Search and Destroy last week as proper kind of alluded to beforehand, this is a team that can outright beat you in your best game modes when it comes to Search and Destroy, but Hardpoint is the kind of, kind of game mode that we need to see those adjustments from. And at least, you know, game over game last week, we saw that when it was Redbirds then going up against Tron. They had two very, very difficult opponents that they had to face up against you know it, it's just nice to see that you know when you went into the match against the side of the Redbirds and then after face trying the Redbirds lost didn't hold you back you take a look at the home roster here for Purdue NW to be able to get a, a little bit more of extensive information for the four players that will be fielding out for this team so far in the division C of the Midwest region in W they got scrappers Howitz Whitman and Echo and then we, when I list off these four players I mean there's really Nobody that really speaks out to me. I mean, in matches that we've seen them play so far, everybody's, you know, kind of holding uh, uh, holding themselves up, accountable for one another. But there's not really that breakout player that we know can exist on every single team. And this this does 
this one little factor does exist all the way up to the CDL level. You always end up having that one breakout star. Someone needs to step up for this PNW roster going forward now in week four. Like I said, you got to win out. You need to find that X-Factor player to be able to lead the charge. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, it, at some points you can kind of constitute and say, okay, you know, you can have everybody kind of just playing together and not really have a breakout star. Uh, but again, that's going to leave you probably in the mediocre tier of teams, especially in the CCL when we know there's so many teams that might have one or two players that really jump out off the paper at every single person, more so than anybody else. But, I mean, for, for the set of Purdue University Northwest, again, I completely agree with what Andy is bringing to the table. But more importantly, when we take a look at this Butler roster, overall, it's been in... Uh, up and down season, I could say, but there are players who will immediately jump off the board at you. And one of those players, essentially for me at least, is going to be Bulldog. It's one of those players that is going to live in the backside of spawns. He's going to try and get behind you, try to make the plays for his team to where not only you're going to secure yourself a little bit of map pressure, but of course be able to find those early rotations in a mode like Hardpoint. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, it could be definitive when we're thinking about it, even in control, right, Alex? Like, you can have a player that can coexist with the enemy team in their spawn when you're playing defensive rounds, specifically for Gavatu and, well, even Tuscan for that matter as well. That if you can have an SMG presence all the way inside your spawn, all the way inside of Vines, all the way over by the beach walk, then, yeah, it, it could be quite uh, damning uh, to the success of the offensive team to be able to find value with that going forward. Bulldog will definitely be that player to look out for. We could take a look at the maps and modes so we can get a little bit more of information about what we're in store for here in our best of five between Purdue NW and Butler. And it's going to be that Tuscan control, smack dab in the center. Looking forward to that one to be able to see how these two teams do play out on it. Because when it's all said and done, these teams have only played a total of four maps in the CCL so far when it comes down to the control game mode. But we're guaranteed the Bokaj hardpoint. We're guaranteed the Berlin search and destroy for maps one and two. And as I said, that Tuscan control for map three. Yeah, and really, kind of the hard point is the mainstay focus for at least Butler going into this match, simply due to the fact that, again, we, we highlighted against Redbirds how they look good in map one. The second hard point when it came around, it was relatively close, but it wasn't exactly where they wanted to be. And if they were able to force a map number five in that series with the way the Search and Destroy had played out in map number two, would it have been a little bit easier on them? Maybe, but would the Search and Destroy still have been a, a tantalizing task to be able to overcome? Absolutely. So for Butler... The biggest thing is, is your search and destroy has been good all year long, minus a few, you know, kind of kind of notches you have on the schedule here and there. But I mean, when we look at a map like Bakaj, it's going to be chaotic. Number one, but number two, if if you're the set of the Bulldogs, this is a map where you can truly thrive against Purdue University Northwest, especially if your Slayers step up. And we know that PNW doesn't really have that strong Slayer that can go ahead and find everything on the board when they need to. It's going to be interesting, uh, specifically, because we know that the last Search and Destroy that was played for the Baltimore Bulldogs, well, they kind of got outclassed and, well, quite literally blown out of the water in that loss, uh, Map 2 versus the Red Redbirds. They need to improve from that, uh, flat out. They need to be able to show that they are that strong team, that they want to be able to define themselves as a top three team coming out of this Division C here in the Midwest region. Then it needs to start uh, there. But as far as for Purdue Northwest... You need to be, remain in control during the hard point. We already know that Bokash, it's going to be mixy. It's going to get dirty over there. Grandma's never really happy with how many people kick up dirt and throw bullets into her knickknacks after she's done dusting all damn day long. But even still, you have to be, remain in control. You have to be able to find that pace for yourself. Play for that initial time. Try to find those trades in the middle of the map. Find that X player that we're, that we're talking about here. Again, we know that Bulldog's going to be that player that's constantly looking for flanks, that's constantly trying to berate the back line of the enemy team. We need that player to be able to come all the way through for Purdue Northwest. If you win this in four, you're going to be in a completely good spot. they got to be able to take this hard point. Search and Destroy is not their strong suit. That Berlin Search could be quite telling. I love being proved wrong. Maybe they're the, going to be the team that comes from week three and week four to have and it lights out Search and Destroy. But for the respawns, for me, Alex, it has to be for Purdue Northwest. If they want to yep. be able to rectify the loss versus trying, again, they have to seemingly win out. And no, you don't have to beat Illini. That's the last tough matchup they have later on down the line. But winning this one out as cleanly as possible, at least in the respawns, would definitely solidify themselves as a potential top three teams. Making sure that you're able to take your hard points is the most important thing next to a search and destroy in a series, obviously, because both have two inside of a best of five. But overall, as we mentioned beforehand, Butler getting better year or rather week over week when it comes to the respawns. Control is going to be kind of that mode where I, I guess it's going to be more of a toss up than anything else because we really haven't gotten a chance to see how their control is going to improve week over week. This will be the first telling sign, but they are at least one and one in the mode. He's looking pretty strong in the mode. Again, we don't know for certainty what they look like as far as Bokaj is concerned, but 
Hey, let's be candid. You gotta be able to have yourself a good Bokash if you wanna have yourself a pretty good best of five, because you're probably gonna see it either in maps one or four in a best of five series, unless the team hard vetoes it out. But hey, we love it. We love a good mix on the Kaj, and uh, we gotta be able to see if these two teams can end up uh, sticking out one more than the other. A lot of SMG presence, triple SMG, sometimes quad, depending on how you're looking at. As far as favorite sides are concerned, doesn't really matter. It's gonna be scrappy throughout the middle of the map, but Butler Bulldogs, I mean, they're actually playing this pretty passively, and because of that, PNW are able to collect a lot of kills, mostly over by the north side, over by that tank line. You just have Echo existing in the hard point itself, starting off on a three, just like that spawns a flip. It's interesting to see that too, because Butler, usually when they are, at least at the beginning of a hard point, they're trying to fly as hard as they yeah. possibly can into the hill, but well, this time it recorrects. It's basically going to be a four to two trade. Butler going to go ahead and control the middle of the map. Close spawns over PNW on the right side. As you look to the mini-map, you can see all those yellow arrows starting to make their way up. Should be about a 2-2 split here. Through the middle of the map, Indy's going to be able to find the first. A nade by a teammate is going to take him down. So, with about three seconds left, we'll see the rotations here all the way into the back spawn. Right now, Butler has the spawns. PNW looking for the break. Going to be looking for this back side. PNW, they understand they got to deal with Plasma, and Plasma is just the awareness. Dive it up to 11. They don't know that there's another player over there, but what Butler Bulldogs are doing so well is that they're making sure that they maintain control inside of the barn. They're counting heads. Plasma rechallenges to take down Whitman from the back on PNW. They're not done assaulting this flank. You have a 24 seconds on the first hill. You rotate over towards the next. Plasma, four in a row. Looking for potential streaks here. In the middle of the map, you see a few players now making their way up through the barn for PNW. DJ from behind tries to find one onto Hoyts, but Hoyts and Whitman go ahead and tag for two. Plasma, you're trying to stay alive and earn some streaks. You're going to get the Glide Bomb and the Strafe as well. So that's going to be big for later on in the game. You get two streaks in the back pocket. 15 seconds left and another rotation this time, though. PNW going to be the first ones there. Be the first one, but how long are you going to be able to hold a great first kill to take down Bulldog? Again, we've talked about how this guy is going to be just barking on your flank all the way through, shutting him down immediately, making sure that you maintain those head spawns. Is step one of a multi-step pro process. Plasma, though, is on an eighth street. Ten and two for the kid. Locks down more shots down the main street. Has one more on a Whitman. Almost had the last bull to be able to get that vital kill. But they have all the streaks necessary to be able to continuously influence themselves on the map. And by off of holding that very long angle, the rest of PNW, they have to whittle their way inside of Grandma's, where the rest of the Bulldogs are just tearing them to shreds. 11 in a row there for Plasma. Starts off the game hot and ready for the Bulldogs. More importantly, though, helps them secure the inside of point number three. Start building that time up once again. Up to the first 25 on point one for the set of PNW. You've only gotten about 10 good seconds as Plasma, Bulldog, and Indy will all pair for a couple that once again will be a four feed down. White arrows and white kill feed there, but his H2O will drip like water. You got yourselves the last 10 seconds of scrap time for Butler. It really feels like ever since that first 25 seconds, you know, a little bit of scrap time there on two and you know, a little bit of entry point time there on three. Butler Bulldogs have really shut the door out on, on PNW Esports so far. I mean, to, to be able to see a 50 point lead on Bokaj within the first set of hard points is very difficult to do. Now, albeit Plasma is also 18 to four, 10 and nine for Bulldog definitely makes things easier, but I love what PNW are bringing to the table. Hit players through the middle of the map, try to get yourself influence on the top side of this barn staircase, able to find themselves some sufficient kills, but hey, it's P4, baby. You gotta be able to keep your head on a swivel. A lot of different angles to where the Bulldogs are able to resurface themselves into as this hill will continue to be contested. Right here, H2O from the front, Whitman, Echo will pair for a couple Bulldog, a beautiful two-piece in retaliation, but gets traded out with 20 seconds left. Rotations will be down towards the bottom portion of the mini-map. You can see the white arrows now start to make their way down, but they also want to go ahead and contest for this time, because it's a big 15 seconds here. You want to be able to get a substantial lead in the first set of hard points, especially on Bakaj, when you see everybody in players 1, 2, and 3 from Butler, who have rotated down towards the south side. You just want to make sure you don't give up too much position in the middle of the map here to where they're going to have height elevation and the advantage that comes with that. The scrap time is going to be good so long as you're able to keep it contested, Alex, but you got to be able to at least define 20 seconds, 25 seconds off of 2, 3, or 5. Or Bulldogs have got themselves into a very nice cushion now as Echo will hit the flank from the Willow Tree. will get themselves some squad spawns, but there's Bulldog on the flank again. Got to be able to watch it. This guy is always going to be back here, finds one. Echo will shut them down. Reinforcements will be back by those hedges for PNW, but Butler Bulldogs, again, just keeping PNW at bay. 
Echo jumps around the corner. Plasma. CJ gonna pair for three. Bulldog get another one there. So that's four to one in terms of a trade. Respawns back to the side of PNW. They're all the way on the right side of the map, making that push back over. And I mean proper with 15 seconds left. Butler has gotten themselves out to about a 60 point lead. We know how devastating that can be on Bagage. What that could mean going into the next of the hard points. And guess who streaked up again at 28 and seven? It's Plasma. Casual. <laughs> with more streaks. Just nice and casual stuff. I mean, why do you need streaks when you're just doing stuff like this? Plasma, <gasps> putting them on. Skates is able to find three in a row yet again. Echo will open and up taking them down, but Siege will be right there for the trade. Making this all just go back up towards the game clock for the time being. PNW, they're trying to take this on a multitude of fronts. They know that they got to get the spawns in for two, but you cannot allow Butler Bulldogs to get set up inside the barn in one for free. 31 and nine from Plasma. Must have been listening to the very beginning of the broadcast where we were talking good about Bulldog because last time on stream, Plasma had a decent series, but it was Bulldog that really was the one to write home about. Now this series, at least in the first map of Bakaj, Plasma is the player. We'll be keeping an eye out for the rest of the time. Four in a row here from Bulldog. You're looking for more streaks to be added onto the table. So many different options here for Butler to be able to use down the stretch of this game. Right now, if you're PNW, all you're really trying to do is hold on because Plasma's trying to streak yet again three in a row. Looks for a stun. You just got to look on the top of the mini-map because player number eight and Whitman, sure, you don't want to push the middle of the map, but this could be big for a pinch unless player number two and Bulldog's able to sniff it out because guess what? He's just on another flank. He's actually going to be able to get spun in back by the hedges due to another flank play that's coming through from PNW. I mean, it's the right play, right? You got to get in the back side of the tin, but you got to do what just happened. PNW able to win the gunfight convincingly. A four for one within the feed. They know that they got to get more presence inside the barn, at least that I would hope so, that they would get more presence inside the barn here. McCormick, there's nobody on top of that roofing, meaning that the players for Butler Bulldogs can hit through the tank formation one more time. Close spawns are still fully in effect with 28 seconds remaining. Echo. H2O, both around the hill, trying to play around one another. Bulldog going to be able to find two. Plasma there as well. They hit directly from the front. They make the play work. Now the Butler Bulldogs can start making their way back over towards P3. You've already got CJ playing a far back angle. Whitman was the first one to challenge there. You look back to middle and Hoyts is there too. Plasma starting to make the way on the pinch. This should secure the spawns, but more importantly, secure P3, at least for the preliminary time. One player that's actually working their way in the back, and well, nobody expected that Hoyts was going to even be back there. What a nice little coordinated pinch coming out from PNW to be able to get their way inside of the hedge spawns. And Plasma is just kind of hanging out on the backside, just waiting for the rest of the hit to be successful for Butler Bulldogs. And well, it's just simply not. Bulldogs now trying to work their way in from the front for the Butler Bulldogs, and will they be able to find themselves a nice little two? Plasma, though, trying to influence themselves, snaps back out from the side to the pistol, almost able to take down Whitman. R really like this kill. It's going to have a few more players spot up in front. Not enough. Bullets inside the magazine trying to go for the beatdown. And that might be a uh, certain misstep if you are the Butler Bulldogs. Because now you can work your way back inside the hard point if you are PNW. This 20 seconds will be good time, but you're still down marginally. And I say marginally, you're still down by a whole hard point. And to be quite <laughs> frank, when it comes down to Bokaj, that's about double the amount of points you want to be down. Still slaying out from the front, though. Holding everybody from PNW on that right side back by P3. Bulldog wanted to get a bit aggressive, wisely challenges back out to the middle of the map to make sure nobody can start making a cutoff either through the bottom swamp or directly up the center of the map. Uh, back out around the corner, you look through the double doors in the middle of the map, Plasma holding down the side of the, out of the swamp. I mean, that's the one player on the map right now that you do not want to challenge. You see everybody just funneled in the middle of the map because guess what? Plasma still is hot, frying at 42 and 14, Andy. What a performance here in map one. Yeah, you know, just uh, casual stuff when you're triple positive through the first set of hills, Alex. It's, um, yeah, that's the guy I want on my team. Echo, though, nice little two-piece, has at least one more to look at inside the barn. They have to break this. I mean, you need this time if you are PNW. There, there's no more time to be cutesy. You have to be able to coordinate these pinches. These split-second decisions are going to mean everything. Plasma just walks back in, has another double weapon set up. We'll find themselves two entries that could open up the floodgates for the Bulldogs, but H2L will shut them down, just down to the scrap of scrap time before we see that rotation going down towards the swamp. 
Lions prowling for the spawns here. You're just trying to make sure that you can get all the elevation possible. But look at where Bulldog is playing yet again through the middle of the map. You get the spawn there. But what this is going to allow is the pinch to now be set up for the Bulldogs. And you can hold this hill if you play it perfectly. But H2O around the corner. That's five in a row. That streaks for PNW. You're down by a substantial amount, but not enough to the point where I would consider this a complete lost cause. Especially with the, with the streak being able to be used. Maybe over towards P1. I'd like to maybe see a P2 if you don't get the break. But either way, that's going to be Hoyts from behind and through the middle of the map. You got two more players potentially around to the left. You get number two. You look for three. Shots aren't going to be there. And he drops down to the point. You come from above. You're going to be able to clean that up. 25 seconds here. No contention for the Bulldogs yet on the loom. Nice little three spree coming through from Hoyts. And you're going to be able to really lean on this now if you are PNW. You remember we were talking. They were down 70 seconds, Alex. Now it's 217. V190 and Hoyts is just snapping. Finds themselves on a five. Got themselves a glide bomb. But Plasma will then complete the pinch here onto another. H2O gonna call on that streak with the glide bomb. We'll find Indy inside of the tunnel. You are not safe inside there. We will go to another set of hard points, and there's still ample time within this game. Typically, when we go to a third set of hills in Bokaj, the game clock's down to like, I don't know, like 20 seconds or something like that, but Butler Bulldogs are in. They have to slay out. They cannot allow PNW to ride off this momentum. Of the time gain, Hoyts around the corner, shots from Plasma, tags him up, weakens him, backs him off. H2O though, from around the corner. That's the 50 bomb here from Plasma. Is it going to be 60? Maybe not enough time. You're in the hill right now. 15 seconds left here inside of the game. One more break from the side of PNW is all it's going to take. A shriek going to be in. That's going to find the first kill. Going to find Siege. So it's going to be a little space here for PNW to try to work their way forward. She was going to be able to pick up another one. And look at how proactive PNW are being. They are actually dealing with Bulldog in all fronts. They read that Plasma's inside the small room. We'll deal with them in kind. But you got to be able to get this scrap time while also focusing on the rotation of back 10. Indy to the middle. Streak. Over the top once again, four down here for the side of PNW so in the middle of the map. You look for the contestion. You're just trying to play as much time as you possibly can. We're going to see a second rotation, but guess who's there? It's the Butler Bulldogs. You've already got yourself set up in towards the point. Player number three in four. Going to be the last two players there. You push through the middle of the map. Bulldog trying to make another hero flank play. It won't matter. The kills will come in. Everything is looking nice in map number one on Bakaj. It got close, but Butler will close it out and take a 1-0 lead in the series. It's probably a lot closer than Bulldogs wanted there towards the end of the second second going in towards the third, wouldn't you say? Uh, I mean, you, when you're having a player like Plasma that was triple positive through the first set with full streaks, then finds themselves at 51 and 20. I was almost about to, to back him with you as well. You know, you just hop off the hill, you know, just keep slaying out, let him get the 60 bomb. It would be <laughs> nice. You know, we, we got Pistachio last season, was able to drop a nuke. Would have been dope to be able to see that come through. But even so, it, it's just one of those things that if you're looking at this from PNW side, you, you cannot allow yourself to start off just so cold. I, I mean, we, we saw them just getting absolutely manhandled in the in the first few hard points, and albeit respectable calls by them to be able to play for those back 10 spawns, to so always try to assault that flank, but you have to be able to find success in the barn and from the front by two other players while the two players are hitting it from the flank. It was never a, a three check mark uh, uh, completion for them. They're they always finding success on the flank, getting those close spawns, and the butler were able to hold them from the front. It was just sloppy through the first set of hills before PNW that they did not get the traction that they were looking for. But then towards the tail end of the second, things really started to heat up for the uh, for PNW as a whole. Things that you definitely want to expect out of them, that, uh, that nice little transition from earlier weeks to this very point in time. Would love to be able to rectify again that loss versus trying. Getting to win out versus the Butler Bulldogs going forward would be monumental for their success. But starting off that cold, maybe the gunny might be warm for the, uh, for the rest of the maps to come. And it was kind of crazy, too. You know, one of the things you highlighted, at least at the very beginning of the map, was how slow Butler was trying to play at the very beginning. Uh, maybe that catches PNW just a bit off guard, and then they start to kind of play a bit more passive on their own. That allowed Butler to go ahead and not only play the map exactly how they wanted to, but they played to exact their strengths. And, you know, this kind of going into this, the talking point, kind of the key to victory for Butler was be able to take that first map and then win your search and destroys outright. For PNW, you had to be able to show up in your respawns. And map number one, we know Bakash is going to be close, but for the majority of that game, it wasn't. Simply put. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not when you got Plasma again, getting full streaks and what was that, their third life? I mean, that That's just absurd. Like, like at the end of the, 
second set and hell even towards the end i i wasn't going to be able to do that quick math but they were like 52 and like 18 or something like that like <laughs> with 42 untraded kills just casual stuff coming out from plasma again and, you know bulldog was living up to the hype that we were talking about just constantly berating flanks always trying to cut through the middle of the map trying to keep things mixy allowed uh for plasma to put themselves at any position uh to where they were able to find all of these kills albeit some players were weak but catching them off guard keep in mind you they were also running around with the automaton uh, that it only yep. felt like towards the tail end they were like look i'm just gunning these guys i'm gonna pick <laughs> up the mp40 and just start slaying out with the rest of the team and it worked it was just an outpacing uh, towards uh, the middle of that hard point but for pnw again needed to be able to pick up be able to match that pace or necessarily maybe playing to the to the game plan that they were looking for alex but that's also the thing about call of duty as a whole it doesn't matter the title i know that vanguard is very very fast compared to where we were in cold war and even modern warfare 2019 but it's the pace that you have to be able to keep up versus your opponents if you cannot match it you have to catch them in unforced errors you got to be able to win those gunfights which pnw weren't able to do towards the tail end so into the berlin search we go alex and yep. Again, this one's going to be quite interesting because you brought up the keys to victory specifically for either of these two teams. For me, for Butler Bulldogs, they got to be able to win this series as convincingly as possible. PNW sure. losing that opening hard point uh, could be quite devastating for them, but they cannot be dissuaded from what they are able to do on a map like Berlin, being able to find those timings in the middle of the map for those first bloods in be able to entry their way inside of one of these bomb sites be able to influence that very quick plant or deny it from the opposite side just be able to match this pace because we saw what it looked like on bocage and honestly that's a suit that looks pretty good on them I mean, really, for PNW, at least going into this map, I mean, just take everything about the map, take everything about the mode away. Really, what I'm looking for is, can you sniff out the flank that Bulldog could potentially be making in any given round? Because, you know, the last time we saw him on broadcast, sure, we get to see Bulldog making these incredible plays by himself for the team, but that could have just been one series where we saw that. This is carried over into another series, so this is absolutely something that's telling of how this player will continue to play, and when you're studying up against Butler, if you are a team that's going to be facing against them you absolutely have to game plan to know that butler will probably be in your spawn a, a, a rough 70 percent of the time throughout the entirety of any given match so if you are the set of pnw obviously you want to make sure that you can obviously get to a site first and foremost or hold one down but then you're always going to have that thing in the back of your mind that's going to be that caveat and say okay if we don't spot out B bulldog in the middle of the map or on an initial push where is this player how can we go ahead and evaluate ourselves and our positioning to find that player get that off the board and that could put them in the really good position almost every single round if bulldog decides to continuously get over aggressive by cutting that player away unforced errors alex unforced errors are what we always going to be looking for as uh i mean you're an sd kid you know all about it right when you're just getting absolutely uh slammed through the opening of the few rounds you cannot meet the pace you gotta be able to draw yourself back you gotta be able to at least make yourself aware that look if we're not going to be able to win the win these gunfights outright we have to wait for the flank to come through just watch it play for the retake whittle down the clock give the opponents of butler bulldogs absolutely nothing as far as information yeah a couple stuns might be able to connect confirming that there's going to be a player in what top fire maybe in on the backside of, of mail what defensive setup doesn't have a player in, in those two positions unless they're four players stacking towards one of the sites? It's very rare that you won't. That's the slightest bit of information that you have to be able to find for yourself and almost rely that, hey, Plasma's probably feeling themselves. They're probably going to look to cut mid-map, probably going to be look to be that entry fragger as well, unless they go back to that automaton uh, role and just waiting for those long-range engagements to come all the way through. And then there's also the Cart 98K that has to be brought in the conversation. That one player can make the difference. We've seen the meta evolve as far as Berlin Search is concerned to be able to really favor that team that can almost play that, uh, that almost advantage of playing against the Unforced Errors. If you can find yourself in a place where players are just trying to quickly work their way inside the A site, keep those doors open. Work your way back through the upper courtyard. Lob in a nade at the perfect time, and you're probably going to stop that plant, if not find one kill, and find sufficient damage for the pinch to come through from the concourse. Car 98k player can shut down aggressive pushes coming through from that B street. All these things need to be exemplified for PNW if they want to resurface themselves in the series. Aggression from Butler was there towards the middle of the last half of the hard point. Same thing can be said, though, for the Lions as they really started to get on the attack. And a search and destroy that kind of feeds into what we know about Butler being that cool, common, collected team. We hope to see them be able to make some sort of stretch, maybe open the series all the way up to a 2-0 lead. But for the side of the Lions, we'd love to see them come back, tie things up at one apiece, and force a map number four to where we will be guaranteed a Berlin hard point. Either way, though, H2O will open things up for the kill on the CJ. That's going to be nice, as it's going to be the advantage to the defensive side with a four versus two. 
And Whitman takes down Bulldog as well. And you can see what this means. Plasma is actually playing that long-range automaton. The bomb dropped in a precarious position and numbers advantage for PNW. They have to be aware of this. They're, now they're waiting for uh, for Hoyts, who's actually putting themselves in the concourse, seeing if anybody's going to flink all the way through. But now Butler Bulldogs, you have to wait for the pinch to come through. you got time to play with. Bounce back from this numbers deficit. At least you have information on one. Looks like Plasma wants to take this player down, but Whitman, nice angle with the STG of all weapons. Oh. Love that range. And quite nice here. One versus four for Indy. Not looking very doable with only 35 seconds left and no clear route to get over towards the bomb. Everybody from the Lions have basically just played this passive. Played it almost picture perfect when we talk about a defensive team just waiting for somebody to make their way up the map. Force out a player, force out a teammate, force out an error. 18 seconds left. You get the bomb. You start to wake your way over towards the B site, but H2O is going to be there. Going to shut you down, and that's going to be the first round on the board, unsurprisingly, to the Lions. Yeah, got to really respect that coming through from the Lions, right? I, I mean, they, they find themselves in a place where, you know, in the early goings of rounds, you're not going to really see too much of anything, too, uh, too many tendencies to read, if you will. So two players just come up through the docks. They catch the timing. They will get there first unless you are just taking a very direct route. And even then, I'm pretty sure that the defensive team will get towards that B-Hut first anyway. And they stop that push from coming all the way through. Siege put their best Icarus impression on, pushing a little bit too close to the sun, and they got cut off, not expecting a player to be by the docks. It's PNW now, taking the aggressive step, feeling themselves off the end of that Bokosh hardpoint. Three players in towards this A site, but you got two players for Butler Bulldogs. Just around the concourse side. Boy, it's going to get information. Yeah, he does. Nice little nade to open things up. Read that there's at least one player here. Echo was able to go ahead and at least get a little bit of entry information as well through a little peek hole inside of the door. But oh, a, oh costly team nade there from H2O. Doesn't land exactly where it wants it. Echo will fall, and what was a great opening pick there for the side of Purdue Northwestern. Andy, it really just turned sour. It's, now it's a three versus three. And they never actually pushed through, so they don't know that Indy is still in there, by the way. We know because of the X-ray in the minimap. Indy's just playing that rat corner in the bottom side of the office. You saw a plasma on the backside of the upper courtyard as well. Should be able to read this, and H2O just hits it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even know what Siege was looking at at that point in time, but it will end up going, or Indy will go down. Now the recontest will soon follow. With the bomb being planted, H2O in a 1v2 somehow finds themselves in a slight bit of advantage. Never mind. <laughs> Ran into Plasma. That's the last player you wanted to run into right there. Little snap down the staircase. Good enough to catch the player running out the door. I thought maybe the play was going to be good enough for a 1 versus 2 clutch because CJ on the flank didn't actually spot that player out. Either way, though, we get to a situation where the Butler Bulldogs will find their first round on the board. And more importantly, Andy, we see a few players finally starting to make their mark in the search and destroy. We've gone defense for defense thus far. What are the adjustments here on offense? You're going to be in their heads rent free, right? I mean, like, if PNW don't send two players, which I really hope they don't, rinse, wash, repeat the same defense that got themselves that early round win uh, over towards the, the B hut, then we'll catch them by surprise. But we will never know. Butler Bulldogs, I mean, three players up towards this A site. We'll end up having the cross held by Echo here with this STG. And then there's one player that's laying prone. That's going to be Hoyts, just waiting for the push to come through from Concourse Staircase. But Siege will be first blood. That's your middle of the map gone. So the flank could be opened up for PNW. Player on the corner, Whitman, Hoyt, slaying down, slaying together. The two players that pushed over towards the A site will find those first two kills. We look back to the middle of the map. Two players looking to make a pinch play now. But his Bulldog will back all the way off wisely to watch over his teammate. They're going to get the bomb down. So this will put a little bit of a requirement of time on the side of PNW on their push. Middle of the map engagement actually happens off screen. Bulldog will take down H2. Oh, and... And that flank play was just a little bit too hesitant. And Bulldog, I don't know where the heck you thought you were about to be going. The bomb's <laughs> planted, my friend. So it's all up to Indy in a 1v3 post plant. Indy, staircase. You're going to find the first player that's information to the rest of the PNW roster of where you are. Pinch comes through. Echo from behind. You don't read the play and defuse it with plenty enough time to spare. The Lions will go ahead, pounce back on the point. More importantly, though, Andy, they'll find themselves yet another defensive round win with a 2 to 1 advantage. Overall, it just seems like when the defensive side just plays a bit more passive or even gets aggressive, they're able to be rewarded for it every single time without relatively any contestion. And I love that 1-3 setup because that's essentially what it was. You know, you, maybe you had a one player in the middle of the map down by the statue, so I guess 1-1-2 one, one, if, you, if you're willing to really get that nitpicky. But Hoyts was in that power position, just laying prone on their belly, waiting for a player to aggressively push up through the concourse stairs, and hey, it pays off. Was able to get the freest kill I've ever seen in my life. So, I mean, PNW... Get themselves 
again, another advantage going forward, at least by one round. The Bulldogs, they seemingly have read this. Echo's gonna get stunned up. They know that there are players over here, and Siege will find Hoyts for first blood. Straight into the V-bomb. Echo should be able to get this one down. Three to three here. You look at where player number six and Whitman is all the way in the middle of the map, just playing a weird corner. Bulldog will make the push up first, trying to get back over towards this bomb. 38 seconds left on a retake. Player you gotta take down is H2O. We'll be that player that has the clutch position. Plasma is in the middle of the map. STG will see the end of Bulldog's round thanks to Whitman. Can he get out with his life? Yeah, they sure can. You gotta be able to clear out this warehouse, and that's exactly what Indy's trying to do. And you spot the players out. Plasma gonna have to take a huge cross map gunfight if you want it. Oh. Indy, beautiful shots to the window, but you don't realize that the player's up and towards the top. Maybe you draw out the information with some shots here. Over towards the bomb, the first couple will come through. Not enough time to go ahead and find the defuse. So H2O plays the life perfectly in the back, allows Indy to get the teammate, and although it's only going to be resulting in a trade, more importantly, you get your first solid lead and offensive round win here on Berlin with a 3-1 to lead now. The side of PNW boating well to try and make this series a tie at 1-1. It was a beautiful execute. You know, there's the one player that obviously did get first blooded on the cross. Again, we're not playing with smokes. Those are G8 here in North America. But even still, able to at least get that player inside of the bomb site. They had that one job was to plant the bomb. The one player that you had to be mostly aware of was H2O, who was in that clutch spot all the way in the backside of warehouse. So annoying to deal with that post plan if you can't deal with that warehouse setup quickly. Bulldogs, actually taking the opportunity, want to do the same exact thing. But again, PNW, they're going to hear all this information. There's a lot of noise being made over inside here, and they might try to find some timing to be able to stop this plant from coming all the way through. I, oh, you're planning it on the wrong side. Sure, you're going to be able to get it down there without it being able to be checked from around the corner, but this does not allow the player in CJ or Plasma, who are playing all the way back and towards the warehouse district of the map, to really be able to find themselves a position to where if they need to clutch at the end of the round, they can just sit back at a long range angle. They're going to be forced to push up the map. So a couple of kills come through. Two players just held up and cooped inside of the mailroom trying to make their push out. CJ looks for one around the corner. Hoyts is going to be there. Whitman will fall. Now the last one from below. Hoyts won't be able to make anything happen. It's going to be the Butler Bulldogs who will win their offensive round despite a relatively risky play. Yeah, that, I mean, that was not even relative. That was a very risky play. You got two players that were inside of the... B-Hut itself could have been bombarded with nades. Again, trophy systems didn't exist in World War II, so with nade just being lobbed in there, would have found a lot of value. It would have softened them up, surely, for an MP40 to work their way in there and clean up those two kills, but just a little bit of hesitation, second-guessing themselves. PNW not trying to capitalize off of the timing, just waiting for players to try to push all the way through. Did not end up being the case. So offense for offense, one-round lead for the Lions. Going to take this three-player stack, trying to get themselves inside of A. And he's going to go right back to this corner. Hasn't made that play in a while. Yeah. I like this readjustment that was going to be coming through, but Plasma reads it perfectly. Do you look for a player in Echo? Maybe makes their way in towards the site. They're going to back off at least here for a moment. This is very, very similar to what we saw beforehand. And because you don't read that Indy's there, it allows him to get number three in a row. Four to two up now is Butler in this round. The Lions have themselves a nice little bit of buffer room. Ever since that point, though, Butler has found themselves a nice string of kills and, of course, an offensive round that came after that fact. So with 45 seconds left, you look now in a two versus three to try and get this bomb worked in towards A. You've got someone who's all the way in the back in Plasma trying to watch Echo that's making the push all the way up. Are you going to be able to get some good timing? The answer is no. One versus three here from Whitman. And Whitman already threw some shots on the backside of Mail, which is why you saw Bulldog immediately resurface themselves to go back over towards the docks, and then the cross map will be coming all the way through, giving away their position. If you find that one kill onto Bulldog, and you try to rewrap your way back through the offensive spawn, or try to push through inside a fire, that would have been the play for Whitman, but could not confirm the kill. It was all happening off screen. Just love the little indicators that we get on the minimap, as that's where my eyes are glued to more often than not. But the two rounds on the bounce for the Butler Bulldogs find themselves all even Stevens going in towards round number seven. They've been able to adapt quite kindly. Again, this is why we highlighted their search and destroy for the Butler Bulldogs. You know, minus that one loss that they faced versus the Redbirds, they immediately turn that back around and show nice, decisive search and destroy. I think that was a team stun that ended up coming through. Bulldogs going to not be pleased. But still, nevertheless, this will be an A execute. There's a lot of information that's actually being thrown on over here, and you can see PNW more or less be set up for this. You got players in the upper courtyard. Bulldog shots through the wall, tries to get some information, at least saw a few players. 
you know, you have a couple of lions who are just sitting all the way back over towards where P3 would normally be. DJ, looking through the middle of the map, you try to find Indy up on towards the bomb to get this bomb down. I don't actually think Hoyts or H2O saw it, so now it's 45 seconds. That's your timer straight, and Bulldog will find the first blood in the round. Hopefully he doesn't get traded out by the red barrel. So you just set up in the warehouse. No flank potential to come all the way through. Whitman thought that they could get themselves through the middle of the map all willy-nilly. Will not be allowed to do so. I know that there's going to be at least one more player that's working their way through the upper courtyard, but nobody saw that H2 got themselves inside the small room, so... Big numbers... Being at least marginalized, Siege will hit the flank with the rap pistol of all everything, and H2O will try to clean things up inside the hill, but the automaton, we only got so many bullets inside that bullet hose to be able to find yourself any amount of information. And I really respect what PNW were trying to go for, right? You got three players that were over by this upper courtyard side, Alex. They were almost playing off of a little nade to come all the way through to try to dissuade these players from getting themselves closer towards that bomb itself. This was not the right angle. The door wasn't open. You could not get yourself over towards the bomb. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting, right? Because, I mean, yeah. you and I watch a lot of Call of Duty. We analyze a lot of Call of Duty. Kismet is the player that almost, like, screams uh, that is able to make this play happen. If you actually put a nade on the backside of that A-bomb, it will take care of the player that's on the opposite side of the bomb. Players need to realize this. PNW, they're hitting it aggressive one more time. They want this B-side. Oh, the Bulldog's already up inside. You're going to sprint on through, and Bulldog's just going to be pre-gaming ready to go. Echo, good luck trying to win that gunfight through the front against Bulldog, who has been relatively good this series. Maybe not in the exact same form we saw against the Redbirds, but has made an instrumental plays in allowing the side of Butler to be able to go ahead and find themselves win after win in every single mode. Hoyt's there, going to be able to trade out CJ, but more importantly, proper Plasma on five in a row, once again streaking here against the Lions. Oh, and Indy found the entry damage as well. We'll just chase it down, slide around the corner. We'll shut down the Lions from getting inside of the B site. This is now four rounds in a row that have been unanswered from the Lions. The Bulldogs really just amounting such an adaptive play of Search and Destroy. Just reading the tendencies, reading the aggressive hits, and even when they do have the setup to be able to deal with it for PNW, once they put themselves in certain situations, they hesitate. These split-second decisions are almost one-to-one -one of what we saw from PNW, or what we didn't see, I should say, brought that Bokaj hardpoint. They need to be able to really act on the information that they're finding early, really be able to find that early damage, if not these first bloods. And now Butler Bulldogs, they're feeling themselves. They're going to go back towards this B site here, Alex. Almost looks like a rinse wash repeat of the first round that was played. Nade will clear out the B site ever so slightly. And he doesn't want to be blooded from this window. But it's all just to cover. Oh, it wasn't watched through the right window. Trying to jump forward at the same time, though. A flank now starting to make a pinch play from the side of the Lions. You're going all the way through the back line, but more importantly, if this bomb does go down, the glide bomb is going to be able to be used for a retake. <laughs> However, the bomb's just going to go ahead and find its way down straight on top of H2O. One versus three. Whitman, he's done a great job in the search and destroy thus far at being able to make plays for the team. But what a heads up away awareness from the side of the Butler Bulldogs to make the rotation all the way over towards A. Won't matter, though, because Butler will win five straight search and destroy rounds in a row after a one to three deficit against the Lions to take a 2-0 advantage in the best of five series with the ability to close it out here in a 3-0 sweep on the Tuscan control. Blood Bomb's pretty good, isn't it, Alex? That's a pretty good streak. I mean, you guarantee yourself a kill. Yeah, sure, a team kill did end up uh, ensuing there for Butler at that final round for nine. But, you know, at the end, what you saw from that POV of the Glide Bomb, you got to see all the players that were hunched up on the backside of the docks. You saw that player through the middle of the map. They got dealt with. But most importantly, you saw Whitman trying to ever so sneakily work their way onto the backside of that warehouse. It was all for naught. And then immediately you called out. The rotation came all the way through. Look. This guy's nowhere near this A bomb side. Let's just rotate back through. If it ends up coming to B, if Plasma goes down, which doesn't really seem like they're losing many gunfights at this point, then you at least have yourself in a post plant 1v2. But able to get yourself that information, able to make those heads up plays, this is the immediate turnaround that we wanted to see from the Butler Bulldogs. If they wanted to find themselves as a top three team here in, these, in this division for the Midwest region, then they have to be able to showcase that and some more. Being able to take these first two maps, Quite honestly, decisively throughout, uh, throughout the tail end of that search and destroy and the early goings of that Bokaj hardpoint, things are looking pretty bright for this Butler Bulldogs roster. You can have a few slip-ups when you're on the road to try and get yourselves back to a place where it's not only playoff worthy, but top three worthy in your division. Uh, I believe we have statistics here ready as well, so we'll take a look at those in just a moment. Either way, I mean... Andy, looking at this series as a whole right now, what are we feeling overall in terms of 
the Butler Bulldogs and how good that they could be later on in the season just from the week turnaround that they've had already. Well, I mean, for, for Butler as a whole, right? I, I mean, you've already played the top three teams in this division. Trine, Redbird, Cod, and Illini. If you can just seemingly win out, the head-to-head -head mm -hmm. versus Trine, you've already got that covered. So it's just about making sure that your overall series differential is that much better than trying going forward for themselves. I'm feeling pretty good about the Butler Bulldogs. You know, ever since week number one, when we first saw this team, things were looking a little shaky for them. You know, not necessarily as definitive as where they are right now in this matchup versus PNW. I was ready to coin this as a very tight uh, series. You know, map number one was quite eye-opening. Well, Plasma was quite eye-opening as an AR player with that submachine gun. But even still, putting themselves in a situation to be able to be 2-0 up going in towards the control, feeling pretty darn good for the rest of the season for the Bulldogs, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Map number three, the struggles that Butler has had so far in control. Will they be resurrected here? We'll just have to wait and see. Either way, though, Tuscan, map number three, after a short break, we'll be back. My name is McCormill. That's proper. We'll see you in just a minute.
Welcome back, folks. It is map number three between the Butler Bulldogs and the Purdue University Northwest Lions. My name is McCormiel. With me is Proper Cast, and it's been a decent series thus far. It hasn't been anything to write home about, per se, for the Lions, but for Butler, we've gone ahead, we've seen a lot of recorrections and some of the things that they've struggled with thus far in the season, and how they look to improve not only in this series, but going forward as they still try to make that top three push inside of their division. Late resurgence on the Bokosh, hard point for the Lions, early going of the search and destroy of Berlin, but the Butler Bulldogs were able to showcase their ability to come out hot during the Bokosh hard point, and the first, in, well, in quite frankly, the opening half of the second set as well, and then adapted for five rounds in a row on that Berlin search and destroy, and as we set ourselves up for this control Tuscan, it's going to be quite telling. Again, this has to be the map out of any single map that is being played in this best of five, that the Lions have to take for two different reasons. Obviously, you know, if you lose this, obviously you're going to get 3 0 but even so, Control has been their biggest game mode since it has come in towards uh, Vanguard here in CCL. They have not dropped it a single time, again, given the other teams that they've been facing. They have been able to win it out uh, quite decisively. Got to be able to find themselves anchoring off of the slaying factor that we were able to get from a lot of these players, specifically for H2O in that Bokosh hardpoint. And quite frankly, the uh, the ability to put themselves in the right place at the right time throughout those rounds that they won in the Berlin Search and Destroy. You kind of put that all inside the Witch's Brew. You kind of stir that up together. You might be able to get yourself a concoction of a Tuscan Control win if you are the Lions. But the Butler Bulldog right now I mean they're just looking fierce they are looking very very good these are not bulldogs that have tuxedo costumes on this is not the uh, a bulldog that you get at your grandma's house these Butler Bulldogs are here to make sure that you know that they are a top three team coming out of this division in the Midwest region you hate to frame it up like this, but for the Lions, you know, early on, at least in the season right now, this feels like this is your last best opportunity to really make yourselves a case to get top three in your division. As we said beforehand, this entirety of, of the Midwest Division C is a, an absolute barn burner up and towards the top. you got so much and so many good invested teams in here. You, you just look to the Redbirds, you look to Illini, and of course, Shrine, which does have that track record. Obviously, Butler beat them, but you look to the side of the Lions, they already lost lost to Trine. So, I mean, overall, you have to feel like right now that, you know, maybe PNW, you sure you go up against Illini, who is just completely disgusting. But, I mean, Andy, this is, uh, and again, I hate to say this, this might be an early ending to what could be a relatively successful season. Well, you'll still have opportunities, of course, towards the tail end of the season to be able to make your argument to be a playoff caliber team. But if you're not showcasing the ability to be able to adapt it at a such a uh, drastic rate, like what we're seeing from the Bulldogs uh, comparatively to the beginning of the season to now, things are going to look even darker in the future for teams that are going to be trying to do the same going forward. The competition's going to be stiffer. Who would have thought that that's how a season typically goes when you have about almost 300 teams competing in such a league like the College Cod League? But even still, yeah, it's not it's not looking too good uh, for the Lions. I mean, again, you know, when you go back to their uh, beginning in the early stages, they fought out against a lot of tough teams. You know, they put themselves in a position where they could potentially not only take maps, but potentially take series. And even against some of those lower barrel teams, They've also cut things really, really close, which is more scary than it is anything. Comparatively to the other side of the Butler Bulldogs, who just simply haven't, they've been able to win uh, a lot of series. The, the only series that they've lost so far are against those two top teams in the same division, which we'll see in the second matchup here on the Alpha Channel of Illini, Cod, and Redbirds. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's... It's 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 a weird feeling, at least for me, when I when I look at the Lions roster because I see a lot of promise, but I also see a lot of youth that has a potential to grow, and more so than anything else, I just want to kind of say this at least at the very minimum. I think Butler and what they have done with their program for, for in in such a short amount of time is nothing short of of incredible, and I, I I honestly think that later on this season that Butler will be a team that is going to be considered a top dog. Maybe not in terms of that top 25 conversation at the very, very, very top, but, you know, at least in consideration for not only playoff spots, but, uh, I mean, late season upsets. We always end up having a lot of those teams. Uh, last year it was uh, Lebanon Valley. A lot of people were sleeping on Lebanon mm -hmm. Valley last season. Butler Bulldogs could be the season's Lebanon Valley. They, you know, they sleep on coming to the playoffs, but got to almost tip it. To a lot of these uh, individuals that are even competing on your screen, these eight players inside these lobbies are collegiate athletes at the end of the day. You know, they're taking a lot of time to focus on their studies, get their degrees, but also playing COD at the same time. And 
It's also typical is just how cool that Butler Bulldogs logo is. It, like, it's a controller, <laughs> but it's also a dog at the same time. I love that. It came to that realization last week. Let's get into this Tuscan control. Starting off with the favorite side will, in fact, be the Butler Bulldogs. Ian W. Kind of spreading out the map quite wide. You know, you're almost expecting for Hoyts uh, to get an engagement coming through from maps. But all Bulldogs all focused on the middle of the map and stopping this uh, completion over at A. If you take a look at your mini map right now, you can see player number six in Bulldog starting to once again make this desperate push up the middle of the map. That's actually going to close spawn the side of the Lions, though, right at that B point. So they're going to basically get a free stab at this. But if Bulldog can go ahead, make this flank quick enough, could be able to shut this down because I don't think the side of the Lions are going to actually know that anybody's behind them. They're not going to go ahead and check it just yet. Love this little resurgence play coming through. Really gives you vibes going all the way back to Black Ops 4 control. Not success over at A. That's fine. Let's go push through maps to your point. Almost able to get that second tick. I really thought that they came all the way through Siege. Same. Right place, right time. We'll end up taking that player down. But first tick of progress over by B is successful. Marginalizing the lead as far as lives are concerned as well. You just got to be able to cut down a lot of these gunfights. Plasma is able to find themselves a very cheeky angle. They're actually just overlooking Indy, who was just existing on you. PNW back to the drawing board, trying to strike A yet, yet again. Nice shot over the top from H2O. You've dwindled a lot of time off the clock, though. If you are Butler on the defensive side, you get a 5 life advantage. Rotation from A back over towards B is going to have to be quick, to say the least. But another contest here over on the A point is going to allow the side of Butler to potentially dwindle these lives a bit further down as well. Hoyt still with a double, and Whitman comes through. And <laughs> what I said about Butler is absolutely true for the side of the Lions as well. At the same time, you're also trying to tie things back up. You've done a great job at that thus far. You're going to get that second tick of progress at A. And maybe you take one more life at stab at this if you are Butler, because you have the lives to be able to do so. And Echo took down Bulldog. Hey, that was the immediate uh, consideration for anybody to blow up this play uh, for PNW was that Bulldog was on the flank and they're still trying to find this play over inside of you. That's Indy who turns around and takes care of Hoyts. So still being contested. So the game clock will stay at 51 seconds so until somebody gets knocked off of the zone completely. Whitman's still existing on the zone itself. Plasma gets themselves on top of Statue. But the second they try to challenge again on the Whitman, they will be cut down. Just got to deal with Indy who's inside of this contest spot. Indy. Tries to go for a nice little gunfight win versus Hoyts, but Hoyts will be on three in a row. A secured, extra minute on the clock, still a five live disparity though, trying to bring it back ever so slightly is the Lions yet again. But you look to the minimap now. Players number six and five in the middle. You look to Indy, who's now making the way over towards HQ, just waiting for a potential push and pinch to come through. Whitman in the middle of the map will find a kill on the Bulldog. Here comes the play to the north side of the map. They're just gonna try and break the spawns of Butler. And I love that. Coming through, oh, nice shots from H2O <laughs> will we'll drop Plasma where they stand. Now they're going to start encroaching forward. Nobody's focused over by maps. You got two players that were actually up top that could work their way through radio, but they're actually going to take this as an opportunity to fully clear out the back spawn of the Bulldogs. Like how they're not playing so spread apart because they know that they need to get the lives back in a place where it's going to be manageable for them to make multiple hits at this hill. Right now, two ticks of progress left. What could have been potentially two ticks earlier on was cut short by CJ, making an incredible play back over towards the B site off of a spawn up. Player number six, guess who it is? It's Bulldog through the middle of the map, looking to make yet another flank play. Women and everybody else pushing out towards the back. Bulldog will find Hoyts. It's going to be a three versus three back over at the point, but now the spawn getting cleared out. This is actually going to force the side of Butler to spawn over towards the north portion of the map. Yeah, they'll actually spawn on inside of the church first, and then if you clear out church, you keep a player inside of church, Echo will take down Plasma up there. So now they're going to spawn a little bit closer towards the north side of the map, but you got success going in towards the back. Indy off screen will find two. Now it's all up to Hoyts. Let's play their life up at the top side of patio. And this pinch play needed to be successful. The little bit of hesitation that was coming through on the back side of the spawn was successful, but because it took so much time, Alex, we find ourselves yep. down to just 12 seconds with the round. Last hit here. If you're the Lions, you got to make it stick. First player around the corner, CJ will find one, traded immediately after the fact. It's Plasma, though, who will go ahead and find H2O. Two players left here, three to eight in terms of the lives left. Hoyts will find the shots there, directly finds himself back into the church. You're just trying to stay alive and not feed potential streaks to the opposition. The defense will hold on strong, despite a late resurgence from the Lions there in terms of a couple of pinches through the middle and north side of the map. It was nice, but simply just wasn't enough. Yeah, not, not to start a whole discussion or argument against uh, against your point about playing for the backside. I, I I genuinely do not like that play that was coming through from PNW. Sure. I mean, think think about all the head glitches that are over there, right? <laughs> by the half wall, by the tank as well. You were you dealt with the tank head glitch, but then you had two players on the back over by that eight, over by that truck and over by that half wall again, just whittling down PNW. And by that point, you're spawning all the way backside of the fountain. 
just took a little bit too long to recognize that we got to get a player to, to clear out the backside of the patio and just have a nice little coordinated pinch into the offense we go for Butler Bulldogs. They start winning the opening break. Nice shots from Siege up top. Takes down the player up on top. Church, one more player towards the middle of the map. We'll try to go for a little bit of a heads-up play. We'll be Hoyts. We'll take down Siege, but all this will be for naught. The player's being cut down the second they try to get themselves on the A zone. And a definitive opening break for Butler Bulldogs. Only losing two lives with that A zone captured. Bulldog looking around the corner. We'll find yet number three. Three streaks there for Butler. All cut down with a few kills that came through from H2O in Whitman. Indy looks to the back spawn on top of the tractor. Rather, the tank. That's not a tractor. We'll go ahead and have a couple players holding down the spawn side. And Andy, you know, with, with these pinch plays that start to come through from the offensive team, I mean, you're you have a substantial seven life advantage right now. If you're PNW, all you have to do is just come off the spawn a few times, make sure you get a few kills here and there. Yeah, you can really just whittle down the clock by finding yourself say, with a sufficient life lead. It's up by five for Butler and Bulldogs, and you could just remain a nuisance if you are Indy, just stopping that clock continuously. Echo for two. We'll finally clear off that B zone. Not exactly the most sexy KD that we've seen from Echo, at least in the series, at 5 and 13 now. Nice little ladder play. We'll take down Siege from getting that top nest position. Are they reading where the play is starting to come through as well? Gets one more player up top. That's going to be Indy. We'll slam them through the, the floorboards, but... When it's all said and done, Butler Bulldogs are actually able to work their way in the backside of the base again, completely deal with Hoyts, and now if you're Plasma, you just gotta exist back here. You just gotta wait for the rest of the play to come all the way through. No need to get over-aggressive, well, not unless you're Plasma, and you can just find all the kills, which, yeah, <laughs> he's just gonna go ahead and do. Sure, why not? Oh, snaps back around, Echo, around the corner. You look for Hoyts there, too. Stun, gonna prohibit the HP health from regenerating, but Plasma will stay on four in a row. Bonds are still going to be close. Bulldog going to get up and aggressive. Plasma still in the back now on five in a row. You have a streak to use if you want to go ahead and win an offensive round here. It might just have to come from that glide bomb being called in. Hoyts and everybody, they should still know that he's all the way in towards the back and will. Echo comes around the corner. They can now start to push out over towards the HQ, back up through radio and into the church. But that was a great play there from Plasma. Unfortunately, though, it just doesn't pan out in the way that they would have liked it. And look at the lives. It didn't sway too heavily for Butler Bulldogs either. We're down to 50 seconds with remaining in the round. Only a three life lead for Butler Bulldogs. PNW need to continue to deal with these numbers every single time that Butler Bulldogs have resurfaced themselves. It's always been in towards the back. Bulldogs are going to be cut down for this flank play. One more player is going to be back here on the back side of Church. Will be Siege. Do they find the kill onto Whitman? They sure will. But a little bit of a discombobulated push will be completely snuffed out. Down to 28 seconds remaining. And Butler Bulldogs just have one life lead. Each turns around. H2O first to challenge. 36 HP will walk away. Player now behind them. It's Whitman who's making a flank play. Heads up, though, by Plasma to get back in towards the point. You stop the timer. 17 seconds left on the clock. You bait out a player here. You're going to be able to almost win the engagement, but H2O there will go ahead, make his name known. Eight versus four. Players now stacking over towards the B point from up top and behind. It's going to be Hoyts now on four in a row. Whitman there. Nobody close to be able to stack the point and or touch it to stop the time. The Bulldogs, it was a nice little try there and a great effort at the end, but the Lions... They stay resilient in a map that they must win. Keep in mind, you, the way that round five is determined if you're new to Call of Duty Vanguard. It's not the same what we were accustomed to in Cold War. If it continues to go defense for defense, it's overall eliminations. If it doesn't come down to outright kills, if they're tied in kills, then the assists will come into uh, play as well, which uh, I can't do that math uh, even from the kills as quickly. I don't have my TI-83 Plus calculator beside me right now, Alex. So it, the assist, sure. not exactly something that we don't uh, have on screen for us as well but so far it is the butler bulldogs that do lead as far as the lives remaining at the end of each round so far it ends up going the distance but nice little research for pnw there at the end just dealing with the flank play continuously butler bulldogs not showcasing any adaptations whatsoever to try to get players in towards the column by way of maps through this opening break pnw gotta be taking the focus on the middle of the map because who would have thought it's bulldog to hit the flank play Cross that A, S, and D. We'll end up finding two. Indy will find the third on the back side over by the well. And that'll completely be the A zone conceded for the time being for PNW. Plasma looking around. Mosing his way onto the point for a contestion. First stick of progress going to come in for the side of the line. 30 seconds ticked off the actual play clock itself. Echo will try to stay alive. Dipping, dodging, bobbing, and weaving. Head up and down, Echo. Back onto the point. Oh, <laughs> Bulldog. You gotta be able to hit your shots. Echo is not going to miss many of those, especially when it's an ego challenge after getting a nice little two-piece. Plasma, though, that's the one player that he was really hoping probably wasn't staring down the barrel at him. 
as Sieg in the middle of the map is going to be looking for a few players to make their way on up. This right now is going to be great just for getting time dwindled off the clock and making sure that they're only going to be an, uh, able to add an extra minute to about maybe 30 seconds. Oh, you gotta clear out you. Siege throws a couple shots. Plasma is over by the tree. Will be dealt with now. Echo takes down Siege and Plasma. There was a player that was all the way up top. Keep in mind you, uh, for PNW, that did get dealt with up by Church. Whitman is still up here. Keep at the time being. Bulldog again through the middle of the map. Finds himself on a three. He's almost take, able to take down the fourth. Hoyts will get the last laugh. Down to 30 seconds. Lives evened up here. 18 apiece. But PNW. Still putting themselves in a position to where they might be able to get this A zone. Again, you just gotta deal with the middle of the map. Siege is able to upset things. Bulldog resurfaces over by the tree. Will finally be dealt with. If they can get themselves on the A zone, just stack it. Just, just get this last stick of progress. You get yourself a life lead. Get that extra 60 seconds. Well, life leads are good, but when you're trying to get over towards that B site, it can be... Quite daunting unless you have maybe eight to nine lives that you can go ahead and throw away at your disposal, especially we only put a minute and 15 seconds. This is on the lower end of what we see for teams having time to get across the map. You're basically going to be able to maybe have two to three good pushes at this hill. As you see, Whitman and C go ahead and trade back forth in a technical manner. Echo in towards the top of the radio. We'll find C. We'll at least allow them to push up the map. Waits will find another, and well, Bulldog is flanking. Who would have guessed it? <laughs> At this point, it, it's it's never surprising at this point. Like, if we're reading this, how many times Bulldog is flanking? PNW need to recognize it as well, which they do. And the stack is in. We actually saw this throughout the CDL this past weekend. The stack is in. You're also finding kills. A nice little nade will come through. I believe that was a team nade that actually pelted Echo. That ended up taking them down. Siege will be credited with that. But two ticks of progress to speak of, and only one more respawn for the Bulldogs. Five lives of separation. Hoyts, you don't have to push up just yet. You've stopped the time. You only have one tick that you need to get. Headshot, there on the Indy. You try to snap around to the second one. Staircase, Echo, now trying to make a play around the corner on the Bulldog. You're going to be able to find it. Three versus nine. The Lions, this would be the greatest opportunity they've had so far to extend the series, or at least put themselves in a position to do just that. Hoyts from behind. Sieg would have to go incredibly massive in a one versus nine. Can't get it done. The Lions will win the first offensive here on Tuscan. That's a rarity in and of itself. It, it really is, but it was so well played if, you, if you're really thinking about the macro side of things uh, mm. for the Lions, right? You know, obviously back and forth affairs is what we are pretty used to when, when you don't win the opening engagement outright. Again, there was way too much value that Butler was finding in you uh, trying to stop that A zone from, uh, from working their way back in. But yeah, uh, at the end of it, they resurface themselves. They wait for those flank plays to come through the middle of the map. They deal with it, found themselves a life advantage. Then they stack the A zone, complete it. And then they work as a cohesive unit to get back down towards the column alleyway and stack for two takes of progress on the B. That really put the Bulldogs on their back paws. Now we find ourselves in a place where Bulldogs, they have to win an offense. If they want to stay alive in this control, H2O's now taking on their best Bulldog impression. No, I don't mean the team. I mean the player. Finds themselves a nice little play through the middle of you. Well, shut down players, but... Butler Bulldogs playing very proactive. Did not find success over at A. They're also finding rotational kills. And I have not seen a yellow kill inside the kill feed in quite some time. You can find yourself a quite a zany setup as Plasma calls in the glide. Trying to dwindle down lives. I like the streak investment. I don't love it, though. You get it down over. Get some information on where those players are coming from. You stop the time by getting over towards B. That allows the reinforcements to get back over towards the A site. You play it perfectly. You bounce all the defenders out and around the map. Bulldog's actually going to be able to get behind one. And now can get all the way to the back spawns. Beautiful trigger discipline. But you have to stay back here until the push happens. And we saw this one of the times beforehand, Andy, where he just played all the way back here. But the team wasn't able to get across the map and he was just useless. Again, Bulldogs, much like their previous offense, look how relentless they are. They really want to get into the back spawn of PNW. Echo was just playing a corner, was waiting for Plasma to challenge, did not fully check out the corner, and then they find a nice little stone on the Indy, will find themselves two in a row. You got presence for Bulldogs inside a church. Now, keep in mind you, Bulldog also got dealt with back here, and they had to resurface themselves because they were not finding value over by the column, could not touch the zone. Whitman will find that trade. So now you know your spawn is clear, and Bulldogs again, on the prowl, trying to get themselves inside a church. They really, really want to get in the backside of PNW spawn. Oh, an Echo playing through the middle of the map. You're just trying to play these big flank plays, and that's actually going to equate to at least one kill. Indy's going to look down the staircase. Bad timing. Three kills in a row now to the side of the Lions. Trying to hold triumphant here on the defensive side. You go ahead and find a few more. What looked good for Butler for a bit of time. They don't get that first bit of progress. You're back to square one with a minute and 15. Your life lead as well for the Lions. 
Now we're reading the hit coming through from Maps. Four players strong for Butler Bulldogs. Yeah, and this is the resurgence that I wanted to see. How many times were they going to fail trying to push through the north side of Church until we finally got ourselves a flood from the patio? Two quick kills. It's a two-for-one trade. Got players just flanking over inside of patio, and HGO will find all three. That'll stop that push from coming through. It's just Indy inside the Church. And off-screen Echo's able to read it. We'll find the kill. Stuffing yet another push out from Butler. PNW looking strong. H2O, glide bomb to use a little later on. Hoyts also has a glide bomb. Would love to see the streak invested here. Prohibit this push from coming through. Make them take more time off of the clock. Bulldog, you're in the middle of the map. Everybody's just going to have to start flying through, and you're just going to use this on a potential retake of Enchiloe. But now, here it comes. Echo, six in a row. Glide bomb over the top. You look to the spawn side. This is looking more and more like a Lions win every single second that passes by. The Butler Bulldogs, they'll push out. H2O is there. Eight in a row to go ahead and end the game. You got the strafe pilot to use, too, if you want it. One more desperate push through the middle of the map. H2O spots a couple. will back off, but in the church, it's going to be Echo, who pairs there? 32 for Echo, 28 for H2O. Up and towards the top, you end the game on eight in a row. You secure yourselves a map three win. And while the pain point of control still stands for Butler, you stay undefeated if you're the Lions in control. That's massive. Uh, again, to be able to find yourself really solidified as an under uh, as a control team being able to take swing map modes is, is everything but being able to you know battle back from the depths uh, i mean how many teams in call of duty history going down o2 in towards the swing map mode find themselves in a position where they not only can bounce back but take map number three guaranteeing a map number four the lions are able to showcase that here and, and with that one point alone really will continue on the argument that that loss that they had versus Shrine in the early goings of things here in the regular season for the 2020 2022 season might have been a little bit of a bluff this team has been showcasing a lot of strengths have been showcasing a lot of adaptations from the early weeks to this one point in time and they're doing it to collectively as a whole team those pinches those plays the understanding of what they had to do the angles that need to be held crossing out every single t dotting every single i from i want to say round number two leading into that final round was absolutely sublime. Just really good control coming through uh, from PNW. Could also be to a certain point in time for Butler's first offense that it, it was just kind of like a, a weird kind of uh, a monotonous behavior that they were always trying to battle out for the backside of uh, of Church. Instead of finally maybe putting two players at the bare minimum to try to get inside maps, they were just relentless trying to put themselves on the backside of Church. It just did not pan out for them. Then when they all finally flooded all the way out inside of maps, they did not sniff out a flank. They did not leave a player to make sure that they had that flank covered as they all wanted to flood inside of the B zone. So here's your map set so far. Butler Bulldogs able to take those first two maps. PNW answered back with those last few rounds of that Tuscan control, which again is not easy to do no matter the level of Call of Duty <laughs> that you are playing, guaranteeing ourselves that map four. Berlin, a hard point, Andy. It's one of those maps that I love to watch time and time again, but is always a fun map number four, especially when there's a lot on the line. One thing that I will say, though, for this Butler Bulldog roster is that Berlin has been one of those maps to where they can take it every so every so often, especially against some of the top teams that they've ended up playing. We'll look to the Lions, and again, the, the biggest thing, the single thing that we talked about the most at the very beginning of the series was Hardpoint being a pain point for PNW and how Butler was getting better at it. We hit on that very, very heavy at the very end of map number one, leading into map number two. But now that we find ourselves back in a position where we have to talk about a hard point again, I just want to make this very clear. Purdue University Northwest has not struggled necessarily in hard point. They got off to a very slow start in the Bacage. They started to make their way back into that game. Is that going to happen again? Possibly. Is there that hindrance that could come from that? Absolutely. But if you're Butler and you don't get that hot start, or you just are basically on an even footing through that midway portion of the game, we saw what happens in respawn when Purdue University Northwest get cooking. They could do that here on Berlin, easily force a map number five. I, I that's all I got. <laughs> I mean, they might I, be able to do it, right? I mean, when you're seeing like Whitman playing that lurking role, especially through that offense uh, there on Tuscan control. The rest of the team was able to benefit from that because it, it then isolates a lot more gunfights for the SMGs. It allows Echo to play this role that we know that they can uh, manifest for themselves. Sun checking around corners, finding themselves favorable trades, finding themselves favorable challenges to be able to get a numbers advantage and, and any sort of engagement. You can make that one-to-one -one how they just played out that offense and that final defense on Tuscan or how Berlin might actually end up playing out. Rotations are everything when you're thinking about it. Two to three, three to four, 
and going back into one for a second set of hills and potentially what it might end up being given how Bocage was played out there at the end, a third set of hills if it ends up coming to be. So I, I think that it absolutely can be. I, I think your biggest adversary going into this is probably Plasma again, who was like somewhere near triple positive. They dropped like 52 real kills in the, in the Bocage hard point, which again is not really something that you really hear of when the when that is the player that picks up the only automaton uh for your team to start things off and went on like a tangent of like 12 in a row something that has to be shut down everything needs to be clicking off on all cylinders if you are pnw nor uh the lions really need to be able to ride off this momentum and if you're butler bulldogs you cannot allow that momentum to be able to subside you cannot be dissuaded the control did you did lose that control but you have to understand that it's just one more map that you need. Can't get wrapped in your own heads here, McCord Mill, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, get wrapped in your own heads. I mean, that's that's every COD player's worst nightmare, right? Any any athlete at any level, whether it be esports or, or the professional level of any any, you know, I guess real sports, real world sports. I don't know how to I don't know how to phrase that in the best way possible. Sports? But yeah, traditional sports, that works too. <laughs> gotcha. Not not to say that these people aren't Eat athletes sports. by any 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 stretch of the imagination, but uh, there there definitely is uh, from what people would say a, a distinction between the two. Either way. Now going into this map number four here, Butler with the opportunity to close out the series with a three to one win on the side of the Lions. You're looking to go ahead and force that map number five. Proper the one condition that you kind of brought up earlier on was that if you want to win this series for the Lions, you wanted to close this out in four maps. Well, you can't necessarily close out in four maps. You're going to have to go to what you hopefully didn't want the Lions to have to face. Yeah, and that's going to be on the Tuscan Search and Destroy if it does end up going in a reverse sweep, no less. What an upset that would honestly be to, to Butler Bulldogs for the rest of the season. And going back to just overall for Purdue University Northwest, that, that one map that they did end up taking uh, versus Illinois State University, the Redbird Cod team, was in fact a hard point. I, I'm not too sure what that map actually was, but being able to say that you took a hard point off of Redbirds really does say something considering that Redbird just 3 0 DePaul uh, just a few moments ago. So starting things off, it will be PNW off on the favorite side. Typically when you do have yourself spawning in for P3 to start things off, you're able to get through the upper courtyard. You have a lot of good angles to be able to get inside office for free. And that's exactly what happens for PNW, albeit not exactly all the time in the world to speak of, but they deal with the play very, very well for Butler Bulldogs, forcing them to play for the rotation over towards two. Three players already inside, ready, rotated. You look, player number five in H2O. Flank plays were very, very, very common at the very end of our Tuscan control by the side of the Lions. You secure those spawns all the way over towards the right side. You force Butler back over towards the left. Now, if you're Butler, if you hold this, this is great because you can get those rotations over to P3 for free. Yeah, yeah you absolutely can. As long as you continuously uh, hold yourself on that north lane, right? That, that B street, as we like to call it, as C will be able to find themselves too with the auto resurfacing themselves for PNW, trying to break this from the back. A lot of good time here. Last player going to be making their way in towards the point. It's going to be Hoyt's Bulldog, though, from behind. Shots are going to be there. Doubled up inside of the hard point. Beautiful kill. A flush shot of players on the side of PNW. You look to player number three and C. Going to be making a play all the way back over towards P1 for the next set of rotations. 15 seconds left. Nobody from the side of PNW starting to make this hit. And off screen engagement is going to be the first of many kills that are going to have to come through if you want to break into P3. First rotational gunfight, Whitman's actually going to be able to find for themselves. Bulldog from the front is going to be able to take down Hoyts. Has one more up front. Will jump chow their way inside. They take down H2O, but the spawn's still in for PNW. Now Bulldog has to continue to go massive. They do find three in a row, knowing that there are more players back here. Whitman will shut them down with a hit from the front for Bulldogs. So far, it, it was successful, but again, they could not get a player over back by that crane, allowing the Lions to be able to hold these closer spawns, resurfacing themselves in the hard point. And it came down to Whitman, who laid down, made sure that Bulldog couldn't push all the way through the back. He tried to get some good movement, maybe break on out and towards the back spawns. Just wasn't enough to be able to find the last few shots. So Whitman, Echo, doubling together, trying to bring themselves back. It's been a relatively close first three hard points. Right now, though, it's once again going to come down to the rotational battle. Who's going to be willing to give up a large 25 seconds of time? The answer right now is the Butler Bulldogs. We're set up for P4. You just have to make sure that you shut down everybody from this northward push. You're around the back. Butler actually didn't spot out H2 over towards the right side. Going to be a big play coming through in the backside. H2O is actually fully clearing out all of the boathouse. And 
It actually seems like that C has read this, but are they going to be aware that there were two players over here? Well, off screen, we'll get our answer is absolutely not. Butler Bulldogs, they will still be able to hold those back train spawns. You still have Sieg that is in the back side of the warehouse, and PNW just unsuccessful dealing with all these isolated long-range gunfights. Plasma Sieg able to find all three necessary to be able to lock down this opening 20 seconds. It's nice, but if you're PNW, the one thing you can do here is just mitigate as much time as you possibly can from being lost on your side. Make sure Butler can't get inside of the point and hold it down right now, though. They haven't done a great job of doing just that. Three kills, once again, all white in the kill feed on the left side. Hoyt's will go ahead and break that trend for now. In towards the back, Echo, Plasma, one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Hoyt's going to be peppered up and weakened for Plasma to come around the corner. Help out for the rest of the team. Now it's H2O has a big gunfight against Bulldog. Bulldog, rightfully so, will shoot the body after the fact. The 100-point mark is crossed, and Plasma will once again be streaking in a hard point. And you, and you talked about how you were going to be able to mitigate that damage over by the hard point. Mitigating that hard point time only comes through if you're able to deal with the players inside of the hill itself. Who would have thought? But you really were relying on Hoyts being able to find more on that big flank play that was coming through on the backside of the warehouse. And while well, H2O trying to break things from the front, it just came up flat. So now Butler Bulldogs, to your point, you got Plasma who was absolutely slaying out. Triple positive, 12 and 4 through the first four hard points. And if you could, could really just lean on that through the positions that are currently being held from Seag up top third, you're going to be able to cut down all of these PNW members as they're trying to work their way inside the hard point. That's exactly what happens. You don't need to get all of the hill time in the world here on five for Butler Bulldogs. You just have to deny PNW all of the space. Seag four in a row gets cut down 12 and 8 here inside of map number four. Indy hasn't been playing the greatest in terms of overall KD and the amount of kills that have tallied up on the board, but a minute and 21 inside of the hill is plenty enough to suffice. A bit of a slow start when it comes to slaying. H2O around the corner. Hoyt's from behind. Plasma will fall in towards the point with a pinstripe kill feed leading in the way of Yellow at the tail end of it. Five seconds left. We'll get back over towards P1. It's the Lions who have found themselves set up and ready. Trying maybe get 10 to 15 seconds of time before a first break comes through. And this is where, again, you can really turn P1 into a money hill. But the problem is that Echo's the only player over here. You really got to run if you are H2O. And, well, they get completely broken up. And nobody reads that Sieg came up from the back staircase. Is cutting down all the reinforcements inside of the hard point. Echo, last player alive. Indy, Bulldog, able to deal with those last two players in kind. A nice break coming through from Butler Bulldogs inside of one. Bulldog played so sneaky over in the pillars of the courtyard, was able to get behind one, forced them to play a bit slower, allowed the teammates to start making the head glitch like Plasma here. Still a glide bomb to use a little bit later on, but once again, it's a four down situation where you get a four to nothing trade. As Bulldog will continue to tack on a little bit more pain, it's different players all streaking on the set of Butler right now. They haven't lost a life in over 30 seconds. Yeah, it really feels like that. Probably more, honestly. I mean, we've, we've seen four for ones, five for ones, sometimes six in a row for Butler Bulldogs. PNW now forced to play for the rotation. You got a player inside of Mail already just trying to lock things down. That's going to be Hoyts. See, we'll convey that information that Echo was on the backside of that boathouse. Will be dealt with Bulldog from the top ropes. Has been really valuable as far as these rotations are concerned and we can't really be surprised bulldog lives on the flank he lives and dies by the flank let's be honest here echo h2o though able to mitigate that push that came all the way through it is a 72 point lead that butler hold over the lion's head so far and well they're actually keeping them at bay with this 40 seconds remaining inside p2 pnw know that it's going to be one more hit coming through for the bulldogs Echo, nade check over toward the dock. We'll realize nothing's there just yet, but then player number one will read that. Plasma should be able to go ahead, make their way back around. We'll find one there onto Echo. Seagull on screen, though. With a kill there onto Whitman, potentially in the loom. You hop on down. You look through the small little windows that are all shut out. H2O just sitting inside. They know the contestant is here. Right now, the Butler Bulldogs, they did a great job of not allowing the side of the Lions to get a full 40 seconds of time there towards the end of that hard point. We'll keep the lead by about 50 points going here over towards the next point. Proper, this is the big question. Will the break come through? The answer is yes, at least initially, but the rotations were here for the Bulldogs. They should be able to hold this down with another kill there on the Hoyts over on the docks. Oh, I need one more kill, and then Hoyts was able to block out the spawns. Bulldog will spawn in. They'll deal with it. The pinch play will be unsuccessful, but the Lions are still spawning in for one. The Glide Bomb will reveal all of this, and will Whitman... Oh. Wait, I don't see how he was going to die to that. Stays alive. <laughs> up in top third. Up in top fire. So now you're trying to break this from the front if you are the Lions. You've got the position to be able to do it, but you're whittling your way through this very narrow doorway and all of Butler Bulldogs, they will feast. Taking every single Lions member down and there comes Bulldog again through the statue side trying to influence themselves in towards the rotation will be dealt with, but still a sufficient amount of time going in the way of the Bulldogs for three. 
Such a good hold. The break here. You're just trying to go ahead. Contest for the last bit of time. And, and really, you just saw them get about almost a full 60, despite maybe losing about 5 to 10 seconds overall. So as Butler, now we're going to have to rotate all the way across the map. It's feeling ever so slightly out of reach now. If you are the Lions, you have to play... <laughs> And as cliche as it is, perfect card point the rest of the way if you even want a chance to force a map number five. Perfect hard point. You can only give up 24 seconds, honestly. 25 is all Butler Bulldogs need, and they're starting to really influence the rotation again. Indy will be taken down on the backside of the warehouse. The Lions are able to read this. Now you gotta be able to deal with the players from the front, and they do in spades. Whitman takes down C. Now you gotta make sure that you keep players inside the hard point. Watch that flank, Lions. Keep this set up. Well, from the front. That's all you have to do here for the next 30 seconds of time. And you got to start thinking about rotations after the fact. Whitman, Bulldog, will trade back and forth. Another kill there from Indy, though, is going to force the sign of p and out of the point. Purdue Northwest, they're just trying to get in for as much time as humanly possible. But if you're Butler, Indy, you've said this time and time again, all you have to do is rotate early, give up a little bit of scrap time, and hold the next 10 to 15 seconds if you get a nice little break through the front. Nice shots from Echo. We'll find that final kill. Last few seconds will be coming on the through. Oh, shaky shots coming from H2O. Would have loved to be able to deal with Indy. But look at the setup that you're dealing with for the line so far. H2O knows that there's going to be players coming up towards the staircase and is able to read Indy wonderfully. On the opposite side, though, you're still able to keep players alive. But inside the hard point, you got to keep these players off, and H2O can't keep their life. Point number seven, going to be close. Echo on the point. Two players now making their way all the way up in towards the middle of the map. Echo will back off. Players still on for the side of PNW. They've done a great job of making sure Butler can't get any time, at least initially. But as Bulldog goes ahead and finds two, that's going to be good enough to get them onto the point. Four players down on a four to one trade. Spawns are going to be close. Oh, a double little nade there and another kill from H2O over the top. A 1v1 that can ice the game here for the Bulldogs or put them damn close to being able to win. That was a massive kill from Echo taking down Plasma. Plasma has been a wrecking crew. 20 and 13 for them, especially in the early hard points there on Bokaj. But now Whitman's in a prime position position to shut down the rotation from Indian Bulldog and keeps their life to boot. Lions putting themselves inside the hard point. They soak up the last three seconds. They're going to put themselves over the 200 point margin. Just 33 seconds behind Butler Bulldogs and they got the rotation towards new. We've seen good breaks before. It's got to be an incredible one here from Butler though if they want to stop a very, very hot and heavy BNW Esports roster, five in a row from Echo. Streak's gonna be used. They no come back down inside of map number three. They're trying to do it once again here. A hold from the front. They can win off of this hard point, but so can Butler if they break in. They gotta be able to break, and it's gonna be coming from the front. PNW, they got one player that's at least watching the flank. Spawning up is Echo, all the way back by fire, and the hit comes in from the front. Butler Bulldogs are in. They're in 15 seconds, but PNW will be able to spawn up. You've got one good attack, but the player that was going to be close enough to find that contest, at least at the beginning, was already cut down. Now you've just got to fly through the middle, up the staircase. They're not going to have enough time to get to this point. It's going to be a Butler Bulldogs win here. Last second contestant, not enough. GG's in the chat. Another triumphant, crazy late game comeback from the Lions is shut down. But Butler, if there's one thing you've got to be wary going into the rest of this year is do not let your foot off of the gas. Yeah, do not let your foot off the gas. Most importantly, you can't always rely on Bulldog to constantly find flanks and find value with uh, up-the-gut plays, right? I mean, Plasma, Bulldog, always going to be able to find themselves a sufficient amount of kills plus hard point time. 12 objective kills for bulldog by the way and you really feel like the majority of those actually happen over by p3 in the first and second <laughs> set of hard points but but even still I, th I think you're absolutely right to bring up the point that you cannot let your foot up the gas because it allows teams to be able to read uh what you're trying to do across the entirety of the map i mean how many times are we going to be calling out that bulldog was on the flank got dealt with throughout the uh the end of that second set and was starting to get looked at more importantly during that first set as well as we take a look at some of these stats uh, again it won't be as telling from top to bottom until you really to take a look at what Whitman was bringing to the table or what they weren't bringing to the table. Again, trying to play a little bit too fast, trying to meet the pace for Butler Bulldogs was not the answer for Purdue Northwest. You had to play your own game. You could not play theirs. Shutting down the flank there in the second half or the second set, excuse me, was going to be it. But when you have Hoyts that was trying to almost match what Bulldog was doing, trying to put themselves on the rotation, trying to find themselves a lot of flank plays, and it goes out to be 17 and 26. Well, things are going to blow up in your face more often than not. It was a battle for sure to be able to find themselves value there at the end of P5, found themselves a strong P4 at the end of the second set. But they just got broken up way too easily, especially when the, it was all from the front. 
in P1 by Butler Bulldogs. They just came flooding in from the stained glass window, and they just found every single kill, just isolated every single player, the small room, the back side of the window, players in the upper courtyard, they all just dropped like flies. And the moment that that ended up happening, we saw their spawns were essentially in for P3, back by that crane, you had to fly, and just that little bit of hesitation trying to play for that little flank play. That's that split-second decision that I was talking about back by Bokaj. You gotta make those split-second calls, and you gotta be correct, otherwise it's gonna be a hard point loss things I want to hit on here first and foremost it's the fact that that was a huge huge series for Purdue University Northwest that right there I don't want to say completely knocks them off of any chance of being able to get top three at least in the first portion of the stages but that was kind of their last saving grace against the Butler team that had already beat Trine so unfortunately for Purdue you know you, you get damn close to being able to force a map number five and then maybe we see that search and destroy overall but that would have been kind of the Cinderella story almost in a series where they would have had to reverse sweep in order to find themselves a comeback second thing I wanted to say though which is kind Kind of the most important thing I guess I would say overall is that they have the ability to turn on this just kill mode go mode get into the point and just fly and play almost flawless hard point with one another we saw how they did that at the end of Bacage and towards that mid and end portion and we saw that at the end of Berlin there where they were almost able to make that comeback my question is is why is that not there from the very beginning of the game what has to change for this roster going forward in order to give themselves a substantial amount of presence in the middle and beginning portions of the game to allow them to set themselves up for that late portion because right now it seems like they have a decent start it's just that middle portion that just kind of falls flat and then they're able to kind of pick that up towards the end when it's just too little too late I think it's just recognizing just the the pace of play right I mean they, they wanted to beat <clears throat> Butler uh, for a lot of different turns especially coming off that Bocage and off the rip, we saw it uh, in map number one. Try to try to go tip for tat, pace for pace. Try to find as many lesser kills as Plasma was finding for themselves. But it has to be the cohesion. It has to be the teamwork coming through from PNW that is going to be their boon of success. They, again, not to say that they don't have any you know sh shutout stars. H2O had themselves a really really good series, but. It's not like they had a Plasma. It's not like they had a Bulldog, right? Players that are able to turn yeah. one for two, one for three in certain situations, Alex. But what they were able to find for themselves when we did see them on that tear from Hardpoint in towards the other one was when they were able to find themselves nice cohesion. That teamwork needs to be their boon of success if they want to find themselves a valuable end of the regular season for themselves and potentially try to make an argument to see themselves in playoffs later on. We frame this matchup as a defining match for potentially third place overall in the division. And with Butler having wins now against Trine and Purdue University Northwest, they're looking good to go ahead and make a case for why they should be one of the top three seeds coming out of the division C in the Midwest portion of things. We got another match coming up next. We're going to stay in the same division overall inside of the Midwest, but we're going to swap things out. I'm going out. Seymour's coming in. Proper staying around. They're going to take you through the action here coming up next, but don't go anywhere. We've got another barn burner of a match coming up here on the Alpha stream. We also got the Bravo going on at the same time, so if you want to go ahead and watch some more Call of Duty during the break, go ahead and show them some love down there. We'll probably be showing a, pre a preview of it here on the Alpha stream as well, so, you know, just open up both tabs, why don't you? Either way, we'll be back after a short break when we come back. A barn burner of a divisional C matchup.